Once upon a time in ancient India there was a powerful and wealthy king named Bimbisara. He had many enemies who were envious of his success and coveted his throne among his enemies was a wealthy merchant named Anifapindika who was determined to destroy the king and take his place. Anifapindika was a ruthless and cunning man and he employed all kinds of dirty tricks to achieve his goal. One day Anifapindika gathered his advisors and asked them for their opinion on the best way to destroy the king. One advisor said, let's hire an assassin to kill him, another advisor said, let's spread rumors about him to ruin his reputation, yet another advisor said, let's bribe his soldiers to betray him. But Anifapindika rejected all these suggestions saying that they were too risky and could backfire on them. Finally a wise old man who had been listening to the conversation spoke up. There are four ways to destroy your enemy, he said, the first is to kill him physically. The second is to ruin his reputation. The third is to create discord among his allies. And the fourth is to conquer his mind. Anifapindika was intrigued by these four ways and asked the old man to explain them in detail. The old man said the first way to kill your enemy physically is the most obvious and straightforward. But it is also the most risky and unpredictable. If you fail your enemy may become even stronger and more determined to defeat you. The second way to ruin your enemy's reputation is more subtle and indirect by spreading false rumors and lies about your enemy, you can turn public opinion against him and weaken his power base. But this method also has its risks as your lies may be exposed and your own reputation may suffer. The third way to create discord among your enemy's allies is a clever strategy that can work very effectively by sowing seeds of distrust and suspicion among your enemy supporters. You can weaken their loyalty and cause them to turn against him but this method also requires great skill and cunning, as you must be careful not to be caught in the act. Fourth way to conquer your enemy's mind is the most powerful and subtle of all. By using psychological tactics and manipulation you can make your enemy doubt himself and lose his will to fight. This method requires great wisdom and insight as you must understand your enemy's weaknesses and fears. Anifapindika was impressed by the old man's wisdom and asked him to teach him how to conquer his enemy's mind. The old man agreed and began to teach Anifapindika the art of mental conquest. The first thing the old man taught Anathapindika was to understand his own mind. He said, you cannot conquer your enemy's mind, if you cannot control your own mind. Your mind is like a wild horse that must be tamed and trained. If you allow your mind to be ruled by anger greed or fear you will never be able to conquer your enemy's mind. The second thing the old man taught Anathapindika was to understand his enemy's mind. He said, you must know your enemy as well as you know yourself. You must understand his strengths and weaknesses, his hopes and fears, his likes and dislikes. Only then can you use that knowledge to your advantage. The third thing the old man taught Anathapindika was to use psychological tactics to manipulate his enemy's mind. He said, there are many tactics you can use to conquer your enemy's mind. You can use flattery to stroke his ego, you can use fear to make him doubt himself, you can use guilt to make him feel ashamed of himself and you can use compassion to appeal to this sense of humanity. But whatever tactic you use you must be careful not to overdo it or your enemy will see through your game. Anifapindika listened carefully to the old man's teachings and began to put them into practice. He started by sending gifts and flattery to the king praising his virtues and achievements. He also started spreading rumors about the king's enemies making them appear weak and foolish in the eyes of the public. He even managed to create discord among the king's allies by sowing seeds of distrust and suspicion among them. As time went on Anifapindika's plans seemed to be working. The king's reputation be began to decline and his power base started to weaken but Anifapindika was not satisfied. 
he wanted to conquer the king's mind to make him doubt himself and lose his will to fight. So Anifapindika decided to use the most powerful weapon of all compassion. He went to the king's palace and humbly begged for forgiveness, confessing his sins and expressing his regret for his past actions. He even offered to serve the king faithfully and help him in any way he could. The king was taken aback by Anifapindika's sudden change of heart. But he was also a wise and compassionate man. He saw through a Anifapindika's game but decided to give him a chance to prove his sincerity. So he accepted Anifapindika's offer and made him one of his most trusted advisors as Anifapindika worked closely with the king. He began to see things from a different perspective, he realized that his desire for power and wealth had blinded him to the true meaning of life. He saw the suffering and poverty of the people and felt a deep sense of compassion for them. He also saw the wisdom and compassion of the king and felt inspired by his example. One day Anifapindika went to the king and asked him, Your Majesty, I have a question. You have shown me great kindness and compassion even though I was your enemy how can you be so kind and compassionate to someone who tried to destroy you? The king smiled and said Anifapindika I'm not kind and compassionate because I am weak or foolish. I am kind and compassionate. Because it is the right thing to do the greatest enemy is not the one who tries to destroy us physically, but the one who tries to destroy her spiritually when we respond to hate with love, to violence with peace and to greed with generosity. We conquer not only our enemy's mind but our own mind as well. Anifapindika was deeply moved by the king's words and realized that he had been a fool to think that power and wealth could bring him happiness. He decided to follow the king's example and dedicate his life to serving others and cultivating compassion and wisdom and so Anifapindika became one of the greatest benefactors in the land using his wealth and influence to help the poor and needy. He also became a devoted follower of Gautam Buddha who taught in the four ways to destroy one's enemy not by physical violence but by cultivating compassion wisdom and inner peace. In the end Anifapindika realized that the true enemy is not outside of us but within us. It is the enemy of ignorance, greed and hatred that leads us astray and causes us to suffer. But when we conquer our own mind when we cultivate compassion and wisdom, we can overcome any obstacle and achieve true happiness and fulfillment. The moral of the story is that true victory comes not from physical force or material wealth but from cultivating inner peace wisdom and compassion. Gautam Buddha's teachings remind us of our greatest enemy is not outside of us. But within us in the form of ignorance greed and hatred. When we overcome these inner enemies we can conquer any obstacle and achieve true happiness and fulfillment. The story of Anifapindika teaches us that even the most bitter enemy can become a friend when we approach them with kindness and compassion and that forgiveness and reconciliation are more powerful than revenge and hatred. Ultimately, the story reminds us that our actions have consequences and that we should strive to live a life of integrity and compassion treating others. With kindness and respect and always seeking to do the right thing even in the face of adversity.